Welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, the show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs use human design to shift from hustle to flow without sacrificing results. Come here to become an unshakable human and build an unshakable business according to your human design. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. Hello and welcome to Unshakable with Human Design, everybody. I'm your host, Nicole Lano. And today we are together to talk about a question that either gets asked directly or kind of indirectly. And I also want to address why it's so important that we coach by type, that we live by our type. And we're going to talk specifically about generators and manifesting generators today. I get asked all the time, is there a difference between generators and manifesting generators? You'll even see that some of my content, I might put them together. I might say generators and manifesting generators, this is for you. And then other times I split them up where it's like, here's the tip for generators and here's the tip for manifesting generators. That's on purpose. It depends on what I'm talking about. So I want to dive into the differences between these two, how they're the same, how they're different, and why I coach people to their type. And why it's so important to do that. Even if you're not a manifesting generator or a generator, I want you to understand that projectors, there is a specific way that you need to be coached and guided in order for you to live out your purpose, in order for you to find your way. And it might be different because you're different. And 70% of the world are generators and manifesting generators. So a lot of the advice is very geared toward generators and manifesting generators. And honestly, we're all told to be like manifestors. So what I want to get down to in this episode, I'm going to speak specifically about how generators and manifesting generators are different and how they're the same. But then we're also just going to have that broader conversation about why type is so important and why we come back to it, why it's one of the foundations of everything. I would say that there's a human design trifecta. There is the human design type. There is human design authority. And then there is your profile. Those three pieces are what make up the foundation for everything in human design. It all starts with that because that's the individual. That's who you are. That is what we are talking about here. We're talking about who are you meant to be as a differentiated individual in this life. Now you can build on that and you can say, okay, I'm this differentiated individual. Now I'm going to build a brand that's in alignment with me as a unique person and not just a person trying to be like somebody else. We can get all fancy with channels and centers and all of that stuff, but it all comes back to those three pieces that need to be in place. Now, if you want to dive into that deeply and understand that more, I just taught a workshop on this called Activate Your Magnetism because it does come down to those three pieces, but then there's also a lot more to being magnetic. If you'd like to jump into that, the recording is still available for free if you're listening to this when this episode drops, although it will be made into a paid workshop. So please jump on it while you can. DM me the word workshop on Instagram. I'm at Nicole Lano Official. We'll register you right there and then you'll get an email with the link to watch. Or just go to NicoleLano.com forward slash workshop and you can register there. And like I said, you'll get an automatic email with the link to watch the replay. Okay, so that's the trifecta. But let's talk about type and let's talk about generators and manifesting generators and why it's so important to understand why we talk about them together and why we talk about them separately and the way that I look at them differently from a business standpoint and a day-to-day operations standpoint. For anyone who's been doing this long enough and observing different types in their environment doing their thing, I have worked with hundreds of people at this point between readings and inside my programs and in workshops and all the other things that I've done, literally hundreds of people on their human design. So I've seen a lot of examples in front of me, and I've certainly seen a lot of generators and manifesting generators, and I'm a manifesting generator myself. So I've seen the differences, but let's start with how are they the same? Why do we group generators and manifesting generators together? Because generators and manifesting generators have a defined sacral. So we're sort of driven by the same thing. That sacral life force energy. We're here to have fun. But we're here to have fun differently. There's going to be a very different flavor to a generator and a manifesting generator. But the way that we are the same is we have sustainable energy. We have access to sustainable energy. 
and our strategy is largely the same, to respond. We've got to turn the sacral on in order to be in flow with our energy, in order to do the things that are right for us, in order for us to have momentum. Now, whether you're a generator or a manifesting generator, you understand you've had moments at least where you have felt like, I could do this forever. This is so good. I could do this forever and ever. I have so much juice for this. And we're all here to be satisfied by the work that we do. We're not here to sit around. We're not here to just watch other people do stuff. We are the doers. That does not mean that we are lowly worker bees. I hate that connotation. I think there's just that feeling when you hear that you're a generator, either one. You feel like, oh, well, I'm here to work. Ew. I felt that way. I was like, I want to be a wise guide. I want to be a projector. And it turns out I have them all around me in my life. But it's not that we're here to be worker bees. But we have the energy to create what needs to be created. And the other types don't. Not for the sustainable long haul. Like, for instance, this weekend, I reorganized my closet. I pulled out everything from all the drawers in my bedroom. I gutted my closet. Everything came out. That was absolutely a sacral yes. Walked into the closet. I had the time. I had been rested. I wasn't overworked. And I walked in the closet and it was just like, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah. That was work that needed to be done. I got it done. I got it done quickly. I got it done efficiently. And I got it done right. And I felt super satisfied from it. And I was not at all tired the next day, even though I spent like the entire day doing this. I was not at all tired. Why? Because I used my energy wisely. Generators and many gens, you have the same thing. You've got to use the energy you have or it gets, gets wasted. Or you aren't lit up by anything. This is the commonality. So the battery, so to speak, the engine that powers us is the same. We share that. We have that in common. But what makes us different is the way we operate day to day. What turns us on? What gets our energy going? And the way that I coach manigens versus generators is actually very different. You guys are so different (laughs) in the way that you're operating. It's so different the way that I get a generator into alignment and get them into action and get a manigen into action. I will actually say, manigens, we are stuck a lot more. So it's important for you to understand how often you're hitting the break. And usually the break is you trying to figure all the things out because you want to move in so many directions. You end up a little bit confused about all the ways that you could go and you can end up getting stalled. So there's a lot of overthinking about the how. Generators get into that same rut a little bit, but they get out of it a lot faster. They're a little cleaner in that respect where there's less complication. They're just like, let me get to the doing. Getting a generator to focus is so much easier than a manifesting generator. Now, you also know that one of the differences is that generators tend to be more linear in their path, and manifesting generators are more multi-passionate. Our path is going to wind and turn and take detours that we have to take, whereas generators, they're going to march pretty close to the path. It doesn't mean that they're going to do the same thing over and over again and just make the same content, make the same offer, do the same job. It does not at all mean that. However, they're just not going to need the multi-passionate thing the way that many gens do. Our path is going to be so all over the place. It's just really natural for it to do that, for us to just get done building something and already be thinking about what's the next thing. And to me, I don't see generators doing that quite as much. Generators can stay the course. They're satisfied with staying the course. They're also satisfied with taking direction a little bit better. Whereas many gens, we've got an idea about what we want and how we want to do it. And so 
I will say it is more challenging to coach many gens than it is to coach generators in general. That does not mean I don't like doing it. You are my brethren. You are my sisters. And I love coaching manifesting generators because the potential is so tremendous. Once I get you to slow down and once I get you to commit to certain things. Now, in the coaching world, a lot of the successful coaches that are out there, the really big names, they tend to be generators. We're at a point now where human design has come to a level where people talk about their human design on their podcasts and content. They're teaming up with other human design coaches and we find out what they are, and so many of them are generators. Very few actually are manifesting generators, and if they are, you can see a difference with the way that they teach, what they teach, how they run their businesses, and what works for them. The generators that are out there, the true generators that are the big name coaches, a lot of them have a very linear strategy that they teach. Now, that stuff does work. And it can work for projectors. It can work for managens. It can work for generators. I'm not saying that it can't work. You have to make your own decision through your own authority. But what gets a lot of people tripped up is when you try to play somebody else's game. So as a managen trying to make a generator strategy work, the truth is that what I've learned is by coming back to your own authority, you can start to find the truth. Because what we do is we end up in this this or that atmosphere with human design. I'm a projector, so I can't do that because that's a generator strategy and I can't do that. That's not true. You don't want to play a generator game as a projector. As a manifesting generator, you don't want to play a generator game. As a generator, you don't want to be leaning back and not doing things more like a projector, you might find that those things just don't work for you. But it doesn't mean that the strategies cannot work. You just have to come back to your own authority and understand why some of it may work for you and other parts of it don't. And you get to adopt other strategies and pair them with things. And that's what I help people do inside my business by design mentorship. I'm looking at the type. I'm looking at who the person is. I'm looking at their design and saying, this is why this didn't work for you in the past. You will probably need more variety in your offers, manifesting generator. You're probably going to need to have multiple avenues and multiple funnels that are going. Now, how do you do that without getting overwhelmed, burnt out, or confused by trying to do multiple things at once. That's the art of the design. That's the art of learning to work with your design rather than just intellectually understanding it. Because what can happen is manifesting generators say, I'm supposed to be multi-passionate. So I'm going to have this offer over here. I'm going to have this over here. And then before they know it, they don't know what they're selling. Their message is all over the place. People aren't buying. And it just feels awful feel overwhelmed. Maybe you feel like a failure. Maybe you're making money, but it doesn't feel good because you're so stressed out about all the things that you have to create because you've overcommitted yourself. So that's where the other aspects of your design start to support you or tell you where you need to pull back. So it's about working with the general framework of your design. But again, this is that integration part. It isn't about a definition written on a piece of paper. It's about looking at your life and saying, we're going to build this thing, but we are also going to have these in the works. And how can we exercise this need for you to move and play and talk about different things and offer different things and teach different things, but without burning you out and stressing you out? That's the art of working with it rather than just saying, I'm supposed to be multi-passionate. Five offers it is. And then you get like six weeks in and you want to die. And as a generator, when you see other people offer stacking, so they've got all of these offers and they've got all of these things going on. And that just feels really overwhelming to you. It feels exciting for a minute, 
but your energy doesn't spread like that. It doesn't want to do that. It wants to go deep and keep working on something and build. It doesn't have that manifester need for variety and for freedom. Not that you don't need freedom. It's just not in your energy to need it in order to fulfill my purpose. Because that's what we're getting down to. Your energy wants to go certain places. Your energy wants to connect with certain things. Your energy wants to be lent to certain things that ultimately, when you follow it and you do the thing that feels right to you, opens up and leads you on the path of your purpose. That's how this works. And you have to start trusting where your energy wants to go because it is a mind game if you start saying, I'm supposed to be multi-passionate, so that means X, Y, and Z. It doesn't. I'm supposed to be multi-passionate, so when I get something to respond to that isn't a direct straight line from the thing that I'm doing right now, it's off to the side, I don't question it with my mind because some guru told me I should only do this one thing. This is how you have freedom. This is how you'll make a million dollars. I don't give my power away to something I've heard or to someone else's result. I hold my power and I make decisions from my own authority and I trust what's right for me. So if I get a response that's saying yes to going slightly off track for a bit, I give myself permission to go explore that, to go experiment with that, to see what happens and to stay open in my energy about it not browbeating myself or telling myself that I'm doing it wrong or worrying about the correct decision I made, second-guessing my own authority because it doesn't fit into somebody else's formula exactly. This is how you develop a process that is yours. And this is how you develop a process for continually finding what's yours. It's not about what I tell you to do. In my coaching programs, I preface everything. I always say, I'm never telling you what to do. I'm going to throw some things out for you to respond to. And I give them options and I start to have the conversation with them and they find the answer themselves. That's what integration is. I'm not your guru. Nobody is. Nobody should be. There's only people who should bring you back closer to yourself. Because when you find the power in yourself, nobody can take that away. Not even human design. I always say, never give your power away, not even to the human design system. The human design system is a mechanical process. So when you're wondering what the next move is, there's no confusion. There's no fear. I'm not going to say there's no fear. But it's a different kind of fear. We might be uncertain. I don't know where it's going. But we are grounded in that uncertainty. I don't know when something will be a success. I don't know if my next launch will be a success. I don't know when I launch a new program or an offer if it's going to make $50,000 or it's going to make $10,000. I don't run ads. I don't do anything like that. So I can't play the numbers game quite the same way. I do my work. I know what I can do to make them successful. But the big difference that shifted me from having $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 launches to having $50,000, $60,000, $70,000 launches is my ability to stay grounded through every decision I make. What happens when the launch isn't going well? I no longer question whether I should have gone down this path. I don't worry. I just go, okay, data. Now I'm just paying attention to what I'm responding to. I'm not making a decision whether I'm going to launch that thing again, purely based on data. Data is part of it. I take in the strategic data that is available to me because I get to put that in my body and my experience. But do I want to do it again? Do I have a response to it that's saying, yeah, let's do it, or do I not? There's a lot of cleaning out of the energy out of the mind to come back into the body 
that allows us to start making decisions from our strongest part of us, our deepest wisdom, our intuition is really what we are talking about. And for generators and manifesting generators, there are many similarities, but there are also big, big differences with what your path will look like and what it will, what's required of you to surrender to in order to live the path of your purpose. Generators, you got to surrender to fun. You got to surrender to the fact that you're just going to really like doing stuff. And if you're not doing stuff and you feel stuck, it's probably because you're not engaging with life and you're sitting around waiting for something to knock on your door and tell you, go do this thing. It probably won't work out that way for you. You have a responsibility and you have an energy source. So you get to go get yourself unstuck. You can do that. You can't engineer things to respond to necessarily, but you can go and interact with life and you will have things to respond to constantly. Manifesting generators, you've got the same thing, but you've got a vision. You have to connect with one. And you have to slow down long enough and intentionally enough. It's really about becoming intentional as a manifesting generator. So many of us are not. I was not for a long time. I was not intentional. I was really running from my mind. And that muted all of the power that I actually have. So it's about coming back home to the fact that you get to move fast, but you do not have to be in perpetual motion moving all the time. You're diluting yourself when you are. And if you're thinking about what's the next thing, what's the next thing, what's the next thing, what's the next thing, what's the next thing you're diluting yourself and you're draining your energy. And that's why you're tired. That's why you're confused. That's why you feel stuck because you cannot get comfortable with sitting here right now and letting things be. Manifesting generators, more than anybody, you got to come back to the present moment. Can you look around and just be here now? I'm going to leave this here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope this illuminated a little bit of the generator Manny Gen differential. If you'd like to watch that workshop that I did, it is a 90-minute workshop all you have to do is go to nicolelano.com forward slash workshop. You can register there. If you go to Instagram and DM me the word workshop and at Nicolano official, it will register you right there in the DMs. The Unshakable Human program is also open for enrollment. If you want information about that, just DM me on Instagram. I'm at Nicolano official or go to nicolano.com forward slash unshakable human. DM me on Instagram. And we will get you there. Go to the show notes and we have all of that linked up for you if you want information on any of those offers. I wish you well. Thank you so much for being here. And remember, in order to have an unshakable business, you must first become an unshakable human. So thanks for letting us help you become unshakable with human design, everybody. We'll see you next time. If you love this episode and you're a fan of the show, please show us the love on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to the show and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with other entrepreneurs on their human design journey, join our free Facebook community, Human Design for Entrepreneurs. Go to nicolelano.me forward slash podcast links to join the group, book a human design reading with me, or access our free human design resources. We'll see you there.